Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chemical Engineering channel and as you know that we are focusing on the topic of material balance these days and in this regard we are bringing the lecture number 5 which is again focused on the concepts related to the material balance but today we will learn some new methods and the numericals related to the material balance. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe the channel and click the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So talking about the concepts, we will see the two equations, which is number one is the total balance, which considering the chemical reactions. And what is that equation? That accumulation in the system is equal to amount in system minus amount out of the system. So amount in minus amount out. If that sum is equal to zero, there is no accumulation. If for example, you have an uh, amount in of 100 kg per hour, amount out of 70 kg per hour, then 30 kg per hour of accumulation will be in the system. Or further elaborating it, input to the system minus output from the system. That is the overall equation. And once chemical reactions are involved, then it becomes generation in the system minus consumption in the system. So that is the overall representation and that is the new concept which we are learning in our lecture number 5. Earlier this concept was very simple that mass in is equal to mass out component associated with mass in should be equal to the component associated with the mass out. But today it has been further extended to the chemical reactions. The next equation we will see for the non-chemical reactions that the concept of accumulation is applied, the concept of generation consumption is applied and the total amount in minus total amount out and accordingly input minus output plus generation minus consumption. Once we talk about without chemical reaction, then this equation comes down to this that accumulation in the system is equal to amount in system minus amount of out system and that is equal to input to the system minus output from the system. So these are the concepts which we will be using for the material balance calculations. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe the channel, click the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. And now we will start our numericals. So the numerical number one is that water balance on a lake can be used to evaluate the effect of groundwater infiltration, evaporation or precipitation on the lake. Prepare a water balance in symbols for a lake including the physical processes as indicated in the below diagram. All symbols are in mass over the same time interval. So there is no difference in time, no effect of time is involved and you can see in this lake that inlet river water which is R1, precipitation which is P, there are two inlets, then there are three outlets, evaporation E, outlet river flow R2, aquifer recharge W. So there are two inlets in the system and three outlets in the system. So amount in minus amount out and that will represent the total accumulation in the system. So applying equation number two because there is no chemical reaction occurring in the system. Amount in system minus amount out system is equal to input to the system minus output from the system. And that can be said as T in total in minus total out. And that can be said as R1 which is the river flow plus P precipitation minus total T out. So that R2 which is the total out. E is the evaporation and W is the aquifer recharge. Or we can say that T in minus T out is equal to R1 plus P minus R2 minus E minus W. So that is the, simply the representation difference. But the overall balance is T in minus T out. And if this answer is not zero, then definitely it will represent the accumulation. But obviously, we have just drawn the water balance over here. Let's move to the numerical number two. Consider the operation of a storage tank over a time span of three hours, now time is included, the accumulation of water in the tank was determined to be 6000 kg. If the feed and removal rates remain constant during the time span, determine the flow rate of the second feed stream F2. Are two streams in the system F1 and F2. And this is the final outlet which is P. And the accumulation is three hours, it will be 6000 kg. And this is the system boundary which is represented over here. F1 is 10,000 kg per hour and the water removal rate is 12,000 kg per hour. So this one is 10,000 kg per hour. This is 12,000 kg per hour. We need to find out the value of this F2 and we have been given the value of the accumulation which is 6,000 kg. So we can either convert this system to kg or we can convert this system to kg per hour and our answer will remain the same. So basis is time interval is equal to delta T is equal to 3 hours. Applying equation number two, accumulation is equal to amount in minus amount out. And we know accumulation is happening in the system. So accordingly, accumulation is equal to 6000 kg. Now these two flow rates, which 
are associated with F1 and P are in kg per hour. So we have to convert this system into kg to make it consistent with respect to the units. So, so 10,000 kg per hour multiplied by 3 hours plus F2 which is the second feed stream multiplied by 3 hours minus 12,000 kg per hour multiplied by 3 hours. So hour will be cancelled out with this hour and we will get answer in kg and if you use engineering equation solver you will get answer within a second and you will get F2 is equal to 4,000 kg per hour. 10,000 plus 4,000 is entering. So it means 14,000 kg per hour is entering in the system and 12,000 kg per hour is going out of the system with 6,000 kg for 3 hours is present inside this system. With 2,000 kg per hour of accumulation or we can say 6,000 kg of accumulation for 3 hours. That is the simple balance we can say. So that's it from this lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more videos.